Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today, the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. My Bible is open for the third day to the book of Leviticus in chapter 16. We are working our way through the book of Leviticus, typically taking a chapter at a broadcast, but this 16th chapter, we have by determined plan taken three days to deal with, and you'll see why here in just a moment. So if you can, reach over, get your Bible and join me, Leviticus chapter 16, and as well, get something on which you can jot some notes, particularly jotting down some key by references that I will give here. I've got a gospel tract in my hand I would love to put into your hand. I'm going to say something about this track and receiving a sample packet of our gospel tracts here in just a moment, but let me lead into our Bible study time this way. I grew up attending a gospel preaching church, and as a child, we sang songs based upon gospel truth. One of those songs said this, gone, 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 yes, my sins are gone. Now my soul is free and in my heart's a song. Buried in the deepest sea, yes, that's good enough for me. I shall live eternally, praise God, my sins are G-O-N-E, gone. Now, if I were teaching this session in front of a live congregation right now, I'd make a stop and sing that old chorus. It's a good one. Now, today, we get to come here and see and put our focus in on one more of the events of this Day of Atonement. This Old Testament Jewish day had some various parts and aspects to it. One of these was that two goats were brought. One goat was sacrificed and its blood was used. The other goat was called the scapegoat. Now that term scapegoat has been used by many, many people, many, many times, even people who have no idea of its biblical origin. Well, the scapegoat is a tremendous picture of how extensive God's redemption really is. So get your Bible and let's rejoice in the fullness of God's forgiveness of the sins of people when they by faith repent and turn to Jesus Christ. I mentioned gospel tracts here a moment ago. By the way, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one tract in my hand today is entitled, The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. It begins with the testimony of a man who is dying of cancer, and part of his testimony says this, years ago in Sweden, God called me to preach. To this I agreed if he would enable me to sell my farm. The very next day, a man offered me the right price for my farm, but I hesitated, telling him to return on the morrow. Well, after prayer, I promised God that I would preach if the buyer would also agree to take my job as a Sunday school superintendent. Well, the man said that that was the very chance he'd always wanted. He paid me for the farm, but rather than use the money to prepare for gospel ministry, I went to America, and his story goes downhill from there. Here's a great testimony of a man talking about the tragedy of a wasted life. He talks about wasted time, wasted talents, and wasted treasure. It leads right into a clear presentation of the gospel. Oh, friend, here's a good tract. At the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Be ready with pen and paper to do that. 
and we'll send you a sample packet containing 40 plus tracks, each one different, but telling the same gospel message. Please let you and I become partners in this work of evangelism. If you can't wait to the end, just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. That word tracks is spelled with an S at the end, T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible is open to Leviticus 16, I begin at verse 5. The Bible says this, and he, the high priest, shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two goats or two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Go to verse 7 now. And he, again, the high priest, shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats and one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which which the Lord's lot fell, and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement for him and let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Stop, please, right there. Leviticus 16 is about the most important day in the Jewish calendar. It is a day of atonement, and as we've been saying here, the Jewish people refer to it as Yom Kippur. On Wednesday's broadcast, I gave you a four-part outline for Leviticus chapter 16. Then yesterday, I used six words, all beginning with the letter C, like in the word cat, to help us walk through the key events of the Day of Atonement. But today, I want us to think about just how removed a repentant sinner is from his or her sins. Let me say that again. I want to focus today on just how removed a repentant sinner is from his or her sins. I want us to have a settled and fixed truth deep in our soul that when God forgives us of our sins, they are gone and will never be held up against us ever, ever again. Now, let's begin with, by simply identifying that word scapegoat. The word translated here comes from a root word meaning to remove or to make gone. If you were to take and look up that root word in your Strong's Concordance, you would find that it's used to describe somebody's physical and spiritual power being gone. It was used of food that was there but had been eaten up and now it is gone. And it's also used of some objects that are being removed from one location to another and now they are gone. Here in Leviticus 16, we are told that when the high priest had finished making a reconciliation uh, for the tabernacle, that's what verse 20 calls it, at that point the high priest then brings the living goat, and he then, verse 21 says, places his two hands on the goat, and well, let me read here from verse 21, it says, and I'm reading now, he confesses over him, the goat, all the iniquities of the the children of Israel and all their trespasses in all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and shall send him the goat away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness, end quote there. Now that goat bore the guiltiness of the people's sins and took it away. He's called the scapegoat. Their sins were covered by the shed blood of the animals that were sacrificed, and then their sins were removed or made to be gone from them, being carried away symbolically by that scapegoat. Oh, beloved friend. When Jesus Christ, who is the fulfiller of all of these sacrifices and pictures here, when he came and died on Calvary's cross, when he shed his blood and paid for the sins of the world, well, that sin offering only becomes effective for those who receive him. When he did that, Jesus also removes our sins away so completely that God has to find ways to describe it that people will understand. Ways like this. Jot down this reference. Read it later. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. There it we're told that God blots out our sins. And then it says, I, God, will not remember thy sins. I will not remember them. 
still staying in the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, this time, verse 22 says, there God blots out our transgressions. There, the term and the picture of God blotting things out. We've all seen how a pen has leaked and all of a sudden on the paper, the words that were there can no longer be seen. They've been blotted out or covered over. In the book of the Psalms, Psalm 103, verse 12, jot down, actually, I won't have time to read verses 10, 11, and 12, but you read them. But verse 12 says this, as far as the east is from the west, so far as God removed our transgressions from us. How far is the east from the west? Those are, are so far apart. Man, well, those are the farthest distance that a Hebrew person could comprehend. In the book of Micah, chapter 17, verses 18 and 19. Did you write it down? Micah 7, 18 and 19. I'm reading now. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth our iniquity, that passes by the transgressions of the remnant of the heritage? He delights in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Jeremiah, write it down. Jeremiah 33, verse 34, part in part reads, I will remember their sins no more. Here's a great verse, this one from the New Testament. 1 John 1, verse 7 says this, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. What a simple verse, but what a wonderful verse. You want a simple outline? We have the cost, the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus died. We have here the caliber of the one who died, Jesus Christ, his, God's son. And then we have the completeness of the cleansing, cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Oh, beloved, if you are struggling with the whole idea of being forgiven of all of your sins, let me beg of you to apply God's truth to your doubts. Here's two questions I, I beg you to answer. Number one is this, who is a greater forgiver than God? The answer is no one is greater at forgiveness. A second question, are you a greater sinner than God is a savior and God is a forgiver? Did you ponder that? Are you a greater sinner? Are you greater at sinning than God is at forgiving? The answer is no. That's why I love and people for centuries have loved Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now, I mean right now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Oh, beloved, here's the bottom line. Who can you believe more, you or God? Remember now, you've told lies in your past, right? Can you believe somebody who's got a past of lying? Or the God who cannot lie will never lie. It's impossible for him to lie. If he ever were to tell a lie, he's no longer God. Who are you going to believe most? You, the liar, or God, the truther? The issue here is not you and your sin work. The issue is Jesus and his saving work. If you're listening today... That's why Jesus came. He loves you so much that knowing you could not save yourself, he out of love came, gave his life, shed his blood that you could have your sins paid for and he would remove you from your sin so far that your sin could never be brought up again before you, before God forever. But you must receive him. Do that right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.